Hi everybody, this is Jeremy Siskin. I am the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano, of Jazz Piano Fundamentals, book one and two, all available at jeremysiskin.com slash shop, also on amazon.com. If you don't like supporting small businesses, you can order from Amazon. All right, this is already getting punchy, bad sign. Today's video is actually in response to some questions that I've been getting in a class that I teach at my community college about the relationship between some different voicing and chord strategies. Um, and so I wanna show you some of the interaction between planing, which is kind of over here, and then two voicing types, closed position and drop two voicings. And I want to see if we can get clear on what it means to plane, to do planing. I don't know what the verb is necessarily, to plane chords and chord voicings versus what it means to have particular chord voicings. So let's start with just a little bit of background information about these three things. And I don't wanna call them all concepts because they're not really in the same category. And so I'm gonna to try to show you why and how. So planing is the device in which you exactly transpose really any kind of voicing. And kind of by definition, it has to be, you know, beneath a melody. I guess any voicing is kind of beneath a melody. And the important thing to realize about planing is that this is a non-tonal device. Okay. And when I say non-tonal device, what I mean is that the choices that you're making with planing are going to be completely irrelevant to the key center, to the chord symbol, to the general laws of tension and resolution. You're just taking a shape and you're moving it no matter what, okay? So you'll use the same chords when you're planing, whether you're in the key of E flat major, C major, A major, it just like, it doesn't matter. So, uh, now, on the other hand, I've got two different voicing types. So closed position voicings, which I know I've talked about a bit on this channel, um, also known as shearing voicings. Whoa. And these are typically five note voicings with an octave between the top and bottom note. Or another way to say that is that the melody note is doubled in octaves at the top and bottom. And that's what the closed position part refers to, is that it's all within an octave between top and bottom note. And then we've got drop two, which I'll show you the, the short summary of how to make. Um, which is a four note voicing, generally a 10th, but not always, usually a 10th between top and bottom note. So what these three things have in common is that they're all harmonizing a melody. We're kind of starting with a melody and then we're forming something beneath it. But the way that we do this is very different. And by the way, um, if you're really interested in getting into close position and drop two in detail, Jazz Piano Fundamentals book two has all that information. Um, there's two chapters about close position voicing, one chapter about drop two, going through it step by step. I'll give you the overview here, but if you wanna like really uh, delve deep down, um, then I'd recommend checking that out. Synergy advertising, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Trying to do it in a non-slimy way. Okay, so here, what I have is the lead-in to the bridge of Misty. And this is just kind of a nice little passage to work with because it's got such a big, long, interesting melody. So let's start with the idea of planing. So this is the first thing. So remember, planing, what I have to do is I have to think of a shape And then I'm going to move that 
interval set precisely along with the intervals of the melody. Now, there's kind of two ways to do this. One way, which we're going to start with, is we're going to work backwards. So, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to figure out what we want to resolve into at the end for the B flat minor seven. And then we're going to kind of reverse engineer where we should begin. So I'm going to choose, I'm choosing somewhat at random, but also with some knowledge. Uh, we're going to stack fourths here. So. Okay, so thinking downwards in interval, there's a perfect fourth, a perfect fourth, and a perfect fourth. Because we stack fourths. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these melody notes. I'm not even looking at the chord symbol, which happens to be E flat six, but I'm just thinking, okay, I need to arrange notes in perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth. And if we're thinking about the key signature, we would need an A. Um, then the next note, not thinking about anything else, just perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth. And so, just to reiterate, when, we, <clears throat> when we're planning, we might be resolving into a chord, but what happens in between just really is not going to be um, necessarily related to the overall key, chord, anything like that. So, to me, it sounds very like Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea. Um, that kind of modern but not like crazy out <laughs> playing. Um, let's take a different shape. Let's, uh, how about, uh, let's really, if we really want to define this chord, I'm going to write the root, fifth, seventh, and then the, the melody is the third. So from the bottom, we have the root, the F is the fifth, the A flat is the seventh. But as we look at, as we plan this set of intervals, we're not gonna think about that. We're gonna think it's a fourth, it's a minor third, so sloppy, minor, third, fourth, and then between F and B flat, that's a fifth, a perfect fifth. So, okay, now I'm looking below the C, I'm gonna go perfect fourth, a minor third, and then a perfect fifth. Another way to think about this is that this is clearly defining a B flat minor chord. So this is going down by half steps, or it's ascending by half steps. So this is gonna basically be an A minor chord, and it is. Fourth, minor third, perfect, oops, perfect fifth. <clears throat> fourth, minor third, perfect fifth. That looks like an E minor chord, fourth, minor third below that, perfect fifth below that, fourth, minor third below that, perfect fifth below that. So now I get this. Colorful, right? Good. <clears throat> and just in case anybody's thinking about the key signature of E flat major, Right, those naturals. Good. Um, now, we don't always, of course, have perfect foresight to figure out where we want to resolve and how that's going to work. So another thing that we can do is we can just start planning and then figure out a way to resolve it so that it kind of makes sense. And honestly, this happens quite a lot. So let's take let's take a five note chord, kind of clustery chord. All right, so for me, it's easier to think of this as like an F minor seventh chord with the 11th added. And so what I'm gonna do, because the melody is moving up in major seconds, I'm gonna now write a G minor chord, G minor seventh chord, add the 11th in there, and then we're going up another whole step. So I'm gonna write A minor seven, add the 11th in there, uh, then I'm going to, then we go up a minor third. So this was A minor 
So then this one's going to be C minor with the 11th. And then up a whole step, so this one's going to be like D minor. So we're getting the same results, doing the process slightly differently, just because it seems easier. Now, if we keep going, we're now kind of resolving. Um, and if we kept going, we would end up on an E, well, no, uh, E flat minor. So that's not right. So I'm just going to make sure each of these notes has like an adjacent note that it resolves to. So A is going to resolve to A flat. The G we can also see is resolving to that same A flat. F will stay on F. D will go to E flat. And then I'll put a nice B flat in the bass. So I didn't plane now between these last two chords. I'm just trying to resolve it so that it ends up um, sounding good and feeling like it resolves. a little bit bigger but that's cool sounding right okay now so the process for figuring out closed position voicings is totally different right closed position voicings we're also harmonizing a melody but we're trying to do it in a tonal way so whenever I make closed position voicings I'm asking myself what's a chord tone and what's not a chord tone. I probably don't have time to get into that in too much detail on this video, but there's a more detailed description again in this Jazz Piano Fundamentals book too. But I'm basically trying to identify first which are members of the chords. And I'm, I'm gonna select those three. You know, it's the root third and fifth, so it's not that much of a stretch as members of the chord. So remember closed position voicings, and then uh, the D flat also, you know, we only have one note there, it has to be a member of the chord. Um, closed position voicings happen within an octave. So all these are gonna have the octave doubled beneath. The ones that are members of the chord, I'm gonna harmonize with notes of the chord. So basically gonna fill in E flat six. Okay, so see how this is already, this process is just completely different than planning. Planning, it was like, figure out a shape, start with it, and then write it everywhere. Here, I'm being kind of thoughtful about what are the notes of the chord. Um, for this D flat, I'll go ahead, I'll put the root, seventh, and fifth, since I already have the third. Now for these non-chord tones, we have a, some options. The most kind of obvious one, the one with the path of least resistance, is uh, to make it each one a diminished seventh chord. And each note only is associated with one diminished seventh chord, so it's not difficult to figure out which one to use. So for F, I'm going to use F diminished seventh. For B flat, I'm going to use B flat diminished. Oh, sorry, I harmonized the wrong thing as a chord tone. I'm a real dummy. Um, okay, so the B flat was a chord tone. And then the C, I don't know why there's a flat there. So this is going to be harmonized as a C diminished seven. This will work out nicely. And by the way, you see that I'm putting some things in the right hand, some things in the left hand. That is not uh, trying to do anything other than to make it legible for you. So in fact, I'm going to move these. Um, but in close position voicings, we almost always play one note in the left and four notes in the right. You can see my hand's bigger. I'll tell you what, let's do it like this. It works. So chord tone, diminished, chord tone, chord tone, diminished. Now I did reference there's some other things that you can do with those non-chord tones. Um, a couple of the most common are that you can make them diminished chords. You can make them side steps if they're a half step away from a chord tone, which is kind of similar to planing. Um, and you can also uh, make them kind of diatonic uh, substitution. So for example, for the F, we could go to the two chord since F is the two in E flat. So we could make that an F minor seven and that's really gonna sound quite nice. Now, 
it's really worthwhile learning these close position because this, in my opinion, in my methodology, is the way that we move to drop two. So close position and drop two are really highly related. To get from this to drop two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the octave doubling. Okay, so you can see that I'm crossing out all these lowest notes. And then drop two is because we're gonna drop the second note of this chord down an octave. So now we're gonna have E flat, B flat, G, C. Okay, so the process, you know, in terms of whether drop two is more similar to planing or whether it's more similar to, um, to close position, it's very similar to close position, right? Um, again, we're really thinking about the chords, which notes do we need to treat as chord tones, which notes do we not need to treat as chord tones. Um, This is almost completely illegible because of the ledger lines, but I'll show you on this. I like the diminished chord way better when we're doing the drop two here. Okay, so we're gonna go back to a diminished chord. So again, closed position. And here is our planing. Now, one of the things that can get really interesting is that these two, uh, two categories, planing on the one hand and these voicings, can overlap. So I could take a closed position voicing and then use that to plane. I could take a drop two voicing and use that to plane. And one of my favorite voicing types to do this with is this really funny voicing. Uh, I say funny, but it's really quite hip where there's a half step between the, the, um, the two lowest notes. And I do also talk about this in Jazz Piano Fundamentals book two. It's got this kind of Spanish Phrygian sound. And so now I've got a closed position voicing, but instead of um, instead of thinking about chord tones, non-chord tones, whatever, I'm just gonna take this interval pattern and I'm gonna move it up. So now I'm gonna take this closed position voicing and I'm going to use it as my impetus for planing. Um, let's see, I'm gonna move some of these notes into the right hand. It's getting high. So now in each one, it's got a half step between the two lowest notes, and then I'm gonna resolve it here, because I'm not a monster. <laughs> kind of fun, right? So again, it's not, uh, it's not tonal. None of these chords have that much to do with the E flat six. That's the chord symbol. Um, but it sounds cool. And there's a logic to it because it's moving with the melody. Now, last thing we're going to do before I release you from your bondage here is we're going to do this with a drop two style voicing. So this is like a B triad on top and a C below. And now I'm going to use this for planing. So I'm going to do a D flat triad on top and a D below. And then an E flat triad on top and an E below. If you're confused how I'm getting these, go back to the first part of the video. I'm taking the same shape, exact same intervals, and I'm moving it up right along with the melody. I should be like notating these triplets, but you guys get it. You're smart. And then I'm going to resolve it to something here. And actually it resolves kind of nicely see how this sounds. If I were actually playing this, I'd probably change this one to be more tonal. <laughs> I'd probably make it like a diminished chord, which actually all I'd have to do is to change this A flat to a G flat. And now we can actually 
hear the tension resolution. All right, guys, I hope that you now have a slightly better um, understanding of planing and how it interacts with these different voicing types. Um, I've advertised it so many times, but if you're interested in learning more, particularly about closed position and drop two, Jazz Piano Book Fundamentals Book Two is the book for you. Um, if you've watched this whole thing, comment with what you think the verb for planing should be, because I can't figure it out when I say, you know, plane these chords. What should you say? Put that in the comments, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.